Welcome back. Telecom roots run deep in Georgia's red clay, hearkening to the days when virtually every phone call in the state ran through the lines of the Southern Bell Telephone Company. Several mergers later and a new iteration of the company is dialing customers into the 21st century. For years, AT&T has been keeping people connected at home and at work. Now it's keeping them connected while on the go. Serving more than 120 million wireless customers in the U.S. and nearly 4 million business customers globally, AT&T wants to make sure that however you choose to communicate, you have the best experience possible without missing a beat. Ralph De La Vega leads AT&T's mobile and business solutions division, and he's all about technology, teaching, and transcending. And he's the subject of today's Executive Profiles. Thank you so very much for joining us today, Ralph, as we sit in the glow of the AT&T logo. <laughs> That's right. You should it's feel a, really at home. It's a pleasure to be here, Ed. <laughs> I'm very honored. Thank you. So let's go back to Cuba. Let's begin in the early days, those thrilling days when uh, you made the mm -hmm. migration, if you will, to Florida. Things were so difficult in Cuba that our family decided to leave Cuba to come to the U.S. Uh, they feared for their personal uh, you know, safety. Um, Anybody in Cuba could be persecuted. Uh, the businesses were taken over by the government. My dad's business, which was food distribution, was nationalized, so his business was gone. Things were really difficult, and the family made the difficult decision to leave the country, except when you decided to leave the country, you would have to turn over all your material possessions, your home, your car, your savings account, to the government, not to your family, to the government. And so we were leaving, essentially, with the clothes on our back. We thought that making that decision was the most difficult decision that the family would ever have to make. Uh, we didn't realize that when we got to the airport, we would have to make an even more difficult decision. Because when we got there, the militiamen that looked at our papers said five words that changed my life and my family's life forever. And those five words were, only the boy can go. Only my papers were correct that day. So the family had to make a decision. Uh, do they send me ahead? Do they keep the entire family behind? We had no relatives in the US. So my dad made a few calls, and things were so bad that he decided to send me ahead. He said, Ralph, don't worry. It's going to be like a sleepover. We'll join you in a few days. I got on the airplane, and I would not see them again for four years. So I landed in a new country with a new family I had not met, with a new language, with new customs, and in those days, I didn't even like the food. <laughs> so it was, it was a very traumatic experience. How old were you? I was 10 years old. So you can imagine how difficult things had to have been sure. for a parent to even consider sure. sending a 10-year-old boy to a foreign country. In retrospect, it's the best decision that they could have ever made. So when people ask me, Ralph, how difficult was it to merge Singular Wireless and AT&T Wireless, a $41 billion all-cash transaction, the largest in the U.S. history at the time. I say that was relatively easy. Hard is leaving your country, leaving your family, leaving your language, leaving your customs, and starting over. And tell me about the education you started to receive. My first dream, uh, Ed, was actually to be an engineer. When I went to my high school counselor to tell him that uh, I wanted to become an engineer. He looked at my grades and, of course, my finances, and you know we didn't have any financial capability. So he told me I should study to be a mechanic instead. Now, there's nothing wrong with being a mechanic, uh, but that was not my dream. Nevertheless, you're in a new country. You, you don't have your family with you. So I, I listened to his advice, and I started to go to vocational school to learn how to be a mechanic. Uh, and I did that until my grandmother arrived from Cuba. My abuela came from Cuba. And uh, Abuela was uh, the mother to seven children, a school teacher, a poet, and a pretty spunky lady. So when I explained <laughs> to her that uh, I really wanted to become an engineer, but I was uh, going to school to become a mechanic, uh, I'm not going to translate what she said at first <laughs> page. Uh, but I can tell you the second thing she said that always uh, stuck with me, and it's something that I've always mentioned to people, especially the young people. And she said, Ralph, don't let anybody put limitations on what you can achieve. If you want to be an engineer, you can be an engineer. And that moment changed my, my perspective on life. And I, I did a controlled all delete on that counselor's advice. 
went back to school, got my engineering degree, and the rest is history. And it really highlights that uh, young people like I was are impressionable at a certain age where advice and mentoring can really make a big difference in their lives. Walk through the, uh, really the amazing career that you've had through fundamentally one company, different names and mm -hmm. acquisitions and mergers. I land in a country without my family, without speaking the language, without any financial recourses. I didn't even have a penny in my pocket. What I've just talked about is what we call our core business. But the thing is that uh, AT&T and its predecessor companies like Bell South and Southern Bell gave me the opportunity uh, to, to achieve success. Uh, I moved around 13 different times, so I've been to many different places, followed opportunity wherever uh, it was, as long as I had the support of my family. I've had a very good career with many, many chances, and even the job that I have today, I think it's the greatest job in the world because mobility is changing everything we do from the way we live, the way we enjoy our spare time, the way we work, and there's incredible advances that are coming that are gonna dramatically change the way you do journalism, sure. uh, or the way we educate our young kids, or the way we measure our health in the future. Talk about this bestseller. Uh, Obstacles Welcome. Uh, I wrote that book uh, because everybody kept telling me, Ralph, when I told them my story, you have to write a book. So eventually, I, I got enough uh, gumption to do it. Uh, I figured if uh, my grandmother had that impact on me, if I could just inspire young people uh, to overcome their adversities, make sure they could live their dreams, that would be worth every effort that I had, and it has done that. We've actually given away 50,000 copies of this book free to kids in high school, and this is an effort between us and AT&T uh, to help them get inspired to be the best that they can be. You put your mark on Junior Achievement of Georgia for a very long time. You put your signature <laughs> on this facility. How do you respond to what's been built? Uh, this is a dream come true. Uh, this is truly a dream come true. Uh, I didn't think that we would get here this fast. I was here not too long ago and watched it in action, full of kids uh, playing their roles, uh, playing the life of, uh, of a person, and it was just truly inspiring. Uh, it's, it's really great for the Atlanta community, and I, I'm really proud of what Jay has done in this city. You're a wonderful asset for this community and continued success. Thank you. I, I hope that uh, we have more of these chats, Ed. It's been Absolutely. a real pleasure. Total Thank pleasure. you. AT&T is making Atlanta its own little Menlo Park. The company operates an innovation lab called the Drive Studio. There, AT&T works with virtually all major car manufacturers to bring connectivity to their newest vehicle models.